السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته مرحبا بكم معايا في هذا الفيديو بغيت نشارك معكم واحد الفيديو مميز بزاف داروا واحد الاجنبي اللي مشى وبحث في الاصول الجينية ديال المغربة باش يعرف شكون هما السكان الاصليين ديال المغرب ويجاوب على السؤال اللي كيطرحوه بزاف واش المغاربة عرب او امازيغ المهم هذا الفيديو شفت فيه معلومات مهمة وتستاهل تفرجوا فيها كاملين باش نفهم باش نفهموا مزيان شكون حنا وشنو هي الجذور ديالنا الا كنتي مهتم بهذا الموضوع فخليك معايا بين قوسين حنا مغاربه سواء كنا عرب سواء كنا امازيغ فكلنا مغاربه كنا يد وحده خليكم مع الفيديو The country of Morocco is incredibly diverse for example when you go up into the northern regions of the country people typically have high levels of mediterranean dna and when you go down towards the south people typically have higher levels of sub-Saharan African related admixture. You know, what's really interesting about the Moroccan genome guys is that they're like a combination of this indigenous North African core that is infused with this Mediterranean element. We are gonna look at the Moroccan genome through a variety of different time periods to understand who these people are from a genetic perspective. Over here, I've got a Stone Age DNA breakdown of the average Moroccan genome. And interestingly, what we see is that around 30% of their DNA is ibero marusian related. Now guys, the ibero marusians were one of the first people to inhabit North Africa, and they contribute substantially to all North African genomes. It's found in the Moroccans, it's found in the Algerians, it's found in the Tunisians, but interestingly, the cutoff mark seems to be Libya. We don't really detect this ibero marusian component in high frequencies anywhere outside of North Africa. And this is why, guys, the North Africans, from a genetic perspective, are a unique population. When we look at a PCA chart, which is a principal component analysis chart, it tells us roughly how similar populations are to one another. The North Africans form their own unique cluster. But if we look closely at this breakdown over here, we can actually see that around 30% of their DNA is Anatolian Neolithic farmer related. And that's because guys, close to 5,000 years ago, there was yet another migration. This time it was characterized by agriculturalists who originated in Anatolia, who migrated all across Southern Europe and actually entered into Morocco via Spain. This Anatolian Neolithic component is a distinctive Mediterranean signal. That's why at the very beginning of this video, guys, I stress that the Moroccan genome is effectively an amalgamation between this indigenous North African element infused with a Mediterranean genetic influx. After the Neolithic, Morocco faces a long period of genetic isolation. And it really isn't until the Bronze Age where we start to see additional genetic input. Examples of cultures which influenced the Moroccan genome at this time period include the Phoenicians, who eventually set the foundations of Carthage. By doing so, we start to see an additional influx of Levantine-related ancestry within the North African population. You also had the expansion of the Roman Empire during the Iron Age. Guys, we have to take into consideration that the Roman Empire was an incredibly cosmopolitan society. You had groups from all over the Mediterranean integrating and mixing with one another. That's why when many Moroccans do DNA tests, they actually get components of Italic or Italian related ancestry, which can be traced all the way back to the Roman era. Now, a question that I get asked a lot is, are Moroccans Arab? And in order to be able to address this question genetically, I'm gonna compare an Arab Moroccan sample to an indigenous Amazigh sample. And what we see as a general rule of thumb is that Arab Moroccans have higher levels of Natufian related DNA. Natufian DNA is the genetic component that's found high in peninsular Arab populations. So from a genetic perspective, there are some differences between the Amazir and Arab populations in Morocco, but for the most part, they demonstrate more similarities than differences. Guys, we have to take into consideration that identity is not just a function of genetics, but it's also a function of linguistics, culture, religion, as well as a slew of other factors. But again, from a genetic perspective, there are some small differences. Now, obviously, the Arabian component found within Moroccan Arabs comes during the Islamic expansion in the 7th to 8th centuries. But interestingly, it's also during this time period where we start to see the elevation of sub-Saharan African-related ancestry amongst many Moroccans. It's during this time period where the African slave trade start to take into place. That's why when we look into the genetic breakdown of many Touaregs, which are Amazigh groups that live in countries like Mali, they typically have high levels of this sub-Saharan African-related DNA. 
Now, the last major migratory event to impact the Moroccan genome actually occurs during the Reconquista. For more than 800 years, Spain was under Muslim rule. And what's interesting is that the majority of people that were practicing Islam during this time period were very genetically similar to the modern day Spaniards. As a matter of fact, we've got DNA samples from the Morisco, who were Muslims that had recently converted to Christianity. And when we look at their genetic breakdown, they're very genetically similar to the Spanish from the Canary Islands. During the Reconquista, many people who practiced Islam were exiled into North Africa. But not only that, at the end of the Reconquista, the Ottoman Empire was growing in influence and the Spanish government pretty much freed out. It's afraid that all these recently converted Christians are going to do an uprising and rebel. So what it does is it forcibly exiles close to 200 to 300,000 Morisco into North Africa. That's why when we look into the DNA breakdown of many Moroccans, a lot of them have elevated levels of Iberian related ancestry, which can be traced directly to the events caused by the Reconquista. There you go guys, for the most part these are the key migratory events that impacted the Moroccan genome. Obviously there were a slew of migrations that I didn't cover, like the Vandals or the Sephardic Jews, but for the most part we can use these migratory events as the basis of the Moroccan genome. And guys, the inspiration behind this video is, I'm currently here in the lovely Spanish city of Sevilla, the lovely southern Spanish city of Sevilla. Hola amigo, como estas? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, I was inspired to make this video guys because I'm only 300 kilometers away from the northern Moroccan city of Tangier. So, you know, I think after these travels, I'm going to actually migrate into North Africa for a little bit and document the culture there. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day here in Sevilla. So on that basis, buenas tardes from Spain. وغني بالحضارات الى عجبكم الفيديو وما زال باغيين نشوفوا مواضيع بحال هذه ما تنسوش ديروا لايك وتشتركوا في القناه وتخليوا لي رايكم في التعليقات شنو كنتو كتظنوا من قبل وشنو تبدل فهمكم بعد المشاهده شكرا بزاف على المتابعه ونتلاقاو في فيديو جديد ان شاء الله